and then expand. Well, you can see lovely pictures like this. You can see here there's a group of mutant cryptids. Are these in any way related? Is, is the, has the original mutation spread that far? Well, the answer is yes. You can see here, this is by Laura Greaves and Stuart McDonald in the lab, published a couple of years ago. You see, what we've done here is to take the cell, the, 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 turn the block through 90 degrees, and there's a very neat patch of mutated crypts. You then just take a cell from each of those uh, crypts, you can see all right, you can see each, each crypt has the same family of mutation. So they're all related. You can do this in any number and show they're all related. So you're forced to the conclusion that they're all, they're all crypts that derive from the same family of crypts. Now, how is this happening? What's happening? Now, we thought something which should have implications for our patient, because that mutation spread all the way through the colon. We're seeing in normal people in microbiome, and they don't get much bigger than this in normal human beings, um, even when you're 18 years old. We can see this, this spread. So, how it spreads is very important. And the way it spreads is what goes through crypt fission. You can't see the bottom of this diagram here. But this crypt is split into two. <coughs> Crip fission is a very neglected phenomenon in the gut. When we're born, we only have a fraction of the crypts or gastric glands we really want. And the growth of the gut in the neonatal period is through crip fission. For example, when, um, when mice are born, you have a one villus serving with, with, with one crypt. By the time they've grown up, 14 crypts serve one villus. This is all done by crip fission. In, in active chronic osteoporosis, about 48% of the crypts are in fission. And fission is the way in which mucosal defects are healed in the gut. So it's very important. And you can see here, it's unbelievably true. Here's a crypt in fission, then in serial section. You can see here, it's the same crypt. We've taken cells from each partner. And you can see they share the same mutation. They've got a C here as the wild type of the team. So these are unequivocally related. So clone expansion occurs by crypt fission. The stomach is a much more complex organ, as you know, uh, but we've been able, been able to show this as well. Here's a mutated, a titanium mutated gastric gland, and we've taken the cells from different parts of that gastric gland. And you can see they all share the same common clonal mutation. So here we have monoclonal conversion of the gastric gland. And even more remarkable, because gastric glands are really quite complex, we can turn this over. You can see here there's a group of gastric glands. And remember, a gastric gland has got multiple. Uh, sort of bases. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there. So there are five gastric glands here. If you do the mitochondrial genetics, you can see that they're all related. They all have the same mutation, in this instance, in the 16S uh, ribosome RNA gene. So this has happened in the stomach as well. You're getting spread by gland nutrition. And we showed that as we go into it. So here we have a real mechanism by which these mutations can spread through varicosophagus, through inside metaplasia, and through um, these adenomas, and also for command. So, what are inside metaplasia? Well, it's an important uh, um, uh, condition. You can see here, we, have, we also get this sort of mutation. You can see mutated in the style of fruits quite nicely, um, with the cops um, explained. Um, and what's what happened here, of course, in the, in the career ground, is you get normal mucosa, atrial gastritis, like UH pylori, you get various types of insulinous plasia, and you go on to the interstinal type of gastric carcinoma. So it's a very important lesion. And so, do we find the same thing here? Well, you see they spread. Well, what we're able to do here, this is not yet published, but there's a mutated interstinal plasma crypt here, next to a wild type crypt, set that in cells. And you'll find this has also gone through um, a monoclonal conversion. And perhaps even more importantly, if you find a patch of interstinal metaplasia here, you can see this patch of interstinal metaplasia. You take this as the post uh, laser set microreception. You can see quite un unequivocally that um, the, that's a wild type there. All the crypts in there <coughs> have got this CDT uh, transversion in that particular location. So they're all related, so they expand in the same well. So, I you can come to an important conclusion <coughs> in the gut. Crips and glands are clones, because they all share this mutation, so they're all derived from the same stem cell, and clonal expansion occurs by crypt and gland infusion. So this may be the way in which field cancerization in our patients has actually occurred. This mutation has occurred in this crones of these patients in the rectum, and because she's got active, active inflammation, 
driving fissure is to spread all the way back through the colon and into the iron box. So, what, how does this relate to cancer? How can we um, relate this to cancer? Well, it's quite interesting to think about it, really, because how do mutations spread with them? And we're, th we're thinking again about our mutation spread. Let's take this as Barrett P16 uh, cell cycle control gene, lots of mutated in this. And one way of looking at it is like this. So this is the Barrett segment, or any segment of any 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 disease you like. And you get a mutation here, and you lose one allele of, P of P16. And then that expands to fill the entire segment. And that is called selective sweep. When you get the mutation sweeping through the epithelium. And by the way, I think this is the way in which happens in all epithelia, breast, tongue, any way you want. Um, you get the selective sweep. And when it's finished, you get fixation of that mutation within the entire population. And that's very interesting because that shows the mutation is there all the time. And then you then will lose the next alley of P16, and that will spread through the epithelium to fixation. But then P53 will go, and then you'll get aneuploidy, and then you'll get cancer. So that's a way of looking at the way in which you get these successive selective sweeps and fixated mutations. But is this true? Can we show this is true in the various models I've, uh, I've shown you? And I, I think what it shows you when you look at this is how complex this system is and how you can make some very interesting deductions about the origin of, for example, perhaps a soft as well. So let's take a simple matter of colitis associated with colon cancer. You know, these are people who have uh, col uh, colitis for a long time, uh, they get uh, P53 goes quite early on in this, and then ABC later on, we get cancer, and this takes a long period of time. So, Simon Leland was a clinical fellow in the lab, um, I was published in gastroenterology uh, earlier this year, um, and uh, what he was able to do was to take patients with ulcerative colitis and take whole blocks from them, and then set out every single crypt in the block. And what he's done here, you probably can't see it, it's a bit small, he's actually looked at KRAS mutations, He's looked at P53 mutations. And you can see here that in high grade dysplasia, here you've got KRAS mutations and then you've got P53 mutations to do so. So they're very, very similar. And even more impressive, I think, is this one here. This is a, another patient you can see going right along there. And look at the, the heterogeneous histology. You've got dysplasia, you've got hyperplasia, you've got dysplasia, hyperplasia, even just chronic inflammation all the way along there. But notwithstanding, the phenotype, you can see they all share the same genotype. They got two, three, well, two, three, two three, three mutations and an OH17 defeat. So this clone has spread all the way along this segment, this very large segment of osteocolitis. So that hypothesis I gave you shows it's absolutely true. You've got, this is true for osteocolitis, yes, because you've got these mutations, in this case, P53, KRAS, spreading right the way through the mucosa. So it's right from that. Well, that interstitial metaplasia. Well, this again is our public work from uh, uh, Lydia Flores and Stuart McDonald. You can see here these are some Japanese sections because they get a lot of dysplasia. So there's interstitial metaplasia here on the left, there, and we're running into this plasia. You can then dissect this out and then look at the mutation burden in exactly the same way. And so you number these crypt one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are metaplasia, 6, 7, 8 are dysplasia, and you can see here the dysplastic crypts have got this insertion of <coughs> the APC gene, uh, 4, 6, 8, 0, particularly with the colon, and also in 3 and 4 in the metaplastic. So the metaplastic crypts share the same mutation, but these ones, 1 and 2, are wild types. So this shows exactly the same thing. We've got metaplasia here which is then undergoing this, this mutation <coughs> and then becoming this plastic. So this is about the first time that it was actually at the, at the molecular level and, and the microsection level shown an association between intestinal metaplasia and dysplasia. It's all been done by Boyle and Block 